Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to start and continue the videos on fundamentals of C Sharp with Unity. I show you a lot of videos in the past, and if you haven't watched them, make sure that you watch them. I'm going to put the playlist in the description of this video. So what I'm going to be doing today is extending it and adding a new video where we're going to be going into data structures. So the first one that I want to work on is going to be the stack. We're going to be looking at the queue. We're also going to be looking how we can use primitive type versus object types with the, with the stack and also the queue. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing, which is to create a stack by using Unity and C Sharp. So before I get going in Unity, I want to show you some of the fundamentals so that you know what I'm going to be doing in code. So anytime you're looking at implementing a stack, when we're talking about stack, that means that the last one that is getting in is the first one that, it, that is getting out. And it's normally referred as last in, first out. And the reason for that is because when you're pushing something in the stack, let me show you. Let's say that we were pushing a value into the stack. And let's say that this was the value of five as an instance. And then we push another thing on the stack, which is going to be, let's say that that's, you know, a 10. This is just another value and then another value and then another value. So when we refer to putting things in the stack, that means that we're pushing values into the stack. So as we're pushing them to the stack, the first one that you can basically take out or pop out is actually the one on the top. So that's why when we say, you know, last in first out, that means that we can really take this one out of the stack without taking all of these ones out of the stack. So the last in is going to be the first one that we pop out. So normally this is referred as popping and then anything that you're pushing into the stack, it's basically pushing. So we're going to do a pop, which is going to be, you know, if we take something out of the stack, that's going to be the the one that is on the very top so to put to pop it out we gotta basically get it out of the stack if we want to push something into the stack let's say that i wanted to add something else into the stack that is referred as of doing a push so if we duplicate this and we just change this to a push that's basically you know some of the some some of the naming and, and standards when it when it comes to you know dealing with dealing with items in the stack so if you're pushing something in that's going to be a, called a push if we're popping something out, that's called a pop. But you can't really pop an item that has, so I can't really pop this item without popping the first one that is on the very top, then popping this one, popping this one, and popping this one, popping this one, and then finally getting to the one that we want to get. So that's why the last in is the one that is first going out. So always refer as last in, first out. So let's go into, into Unity, and let me show you an example of that. And to show you that, we're going to be also adding a canvas because I think I think visually it's going to make more sense if I add a canvas. So I'm going to add a canvas here. We're going to go into 2D. And then I'm also going to be adding a background. So let me find that. And I'll just do a raw image. This is going to be the background. And then I'll change this one to be black. And then we'll just resize it just to basically take the entire canvas. The reason why I do this is because it's easier to see, you know, if you if you have text on, on black and the text is white. And then what I'm going to do for the text, we're going to be using Text Mesh Pro, which is a lot easier to see. And the text is clear. So let's go ahead and get that imported. And almost there. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this, this is going to be our stack debug. We can call it that's going to be everything that we're going to be storing in the stack and getting out of the stack so what i'm going to do for this i'm going to make let's go ahead and make this al almost the entire size of the screen and then we can probably just increment the font a little bit let's do 50. and then what i'll do i'll duplicate this and it's going to be just our header just so that we know what we're dealing with and then i'll just move this one to the very top and this is going to be just basically a a title of what we're doing. So this is going to be a stack. Let me just do capital. There we go. A stack example with Unity and C sharp. 
all right and then I'll just make that much bigger so that we can see everything and then I'll center it and also vertical let me just vertical align it if I can reach that option there we go okay I think that I think that works wonder if it's this one justify flush okay there we go the middle one all right so that's basically our title this is going to be the data that we are putting into the stack so for today's lesson I'm just going to show you how to do strings and how we can put strings in the stack and basically popping them out and then in a future video I'll show you how to do an actual object all right so I think I got everything here and then most of our logic is going to be on this game object so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new create a new script this one is going to be my video video 15 there we go and we'll just associate that script with the with the video 15 game object all right we can get going there and then the other thing that I need I need to bind this basically this label this text with an object that we're going to be exposing on this script so let me get that going before we go too far so I'm just going to say this one is going to be and I need to let me go back into here this is something that I always that I always do because I forget what the actual class is that we need to ref reference so it's going to be the text mesh pro you good okay we can close this and then this is going to be the one that we need and then this one is just going to be our stack debug I'm also going to make this one serializable and then we're going to be bringing this tm pro namespace all right so I think I don't think I'm going to need update so we're just going to deal with the start method for now so anytime we're dealing with with stacks we we have a class called stack of course and then this one it's going to if you look at the definition we need to bring in the the actual namespace let me see if I can stack and stack equal new stack let's see what it and then inside we should have methods like push something to a stack okay I thought this was gonna be generic let me go into it and see that it, it's okay I see what it's doing I thought it was gonna be because the queue is more it has a generic method that we can tell it what type we want so I guess in this case we're just going to be pushing an object and in that object when we get it out we can cast it depending on what we on what we what type we are implementing I'm gonna make an extension of that at some point where we can define which type we want so for now this is what this is basically the the steps so first you need to define define your stack ne next you need to of course pass in data so we're going to be prepping prep our data and we make this a little bigger so you can see from your screen and then in, in our case i think if i do let's say that we were storing the player's age and we could probably just define that by say play player age and this could say okay the player age is let's say that it's 25 right and let's say that this was the first player and the first player age was 25 but then the next one it's going to be 10 and then the next one it's going to be 30 and we can call this one second this one could be the third make this a little smaller there we go and then and then on so on so basically this is going to be our data and then let's say that we wanted to put something in the stack so I'm also going to be creating a method here that is going to allow us to print the information that we have in the stack so to do that I'm just going to say show information in stack and then we're basically going to pass in the stack and then I'll show you how that is implemented but let's say that we want to push we want to basically push a new player age into the stack so all we need to do is basically say a stack and then you would say push and then you need to tell it what object you're going to be pushing into the stack so I'm going to basically put I'm going to push the first player age and I'm also going to push the second player age and then I'm also going to do that third player age so so far so good we have three items in the stack and let me just make that okay so now what I want to do is I want to show that information so I'm going to call show information in stack and then pass in the pass in the stack so this is going to be show information 
And what we're going to do is we're going to put that information into this tag debug so that we can clearly see it. So what I'll do, I'll just say text, and then we'll basically are going to be appending each item, which I'll be adding in just, in just a second. So we're going to need some kind of loop to show everything that we're popping. So I'm just going to say for each, and we can, let's go ahead and do, let's see what I have here. So I'm going to say to array. So I could say to array to basically go through each item in the stack. And this is also an enumerable. So if I were to do something like a stack and we can hover over this item and then this is going to go through each item that is currently in the stack and you can see that the object that I'm getting back is just an object. If we go back to the stack definition, this is this is inheriting from my collection and I enumerable, which means that I can easily just do something like this. So we can say stack item is, the, is what we're looping through and I know that they're integers. So we know that we can cast it to an integer and, and the data type should just basically cast to that. So, but before I do this, this is this is basically just gonna show it, but it's not gonna pop anything just yet. And that's fine, we can, we can just show what we have and then we can start doing pops. Okay, so then the next thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to be printing this. So I'm just gonna do my interpolation here and then I'm going to basically stack item, show the stack item and I don't believe I need to cast it just yet, but we can we can find out. Okay, so I think everything that we have here is what we need. We're showing information in the stack and then we're looping through each. Okay, so let's go back into Unity and we need to associate our new label to the basically the video 15 script. So I'm gonna associate, it's actually a text and that's what we have. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and see what happens. We might just get objects or we might just get Okay, I see what's happening. So it looks like everything is working. The only thing that I have here is I have a problem with the, the sizing of the canvas. So let me see what happened. And I'll just go ahead and I'll just go ahead and size it. And something like I think something like that works. And let me just make it a little smaller. Oh, and I don't want to resize that. I want to resize this component. And perfect. It's gonna make this one a little smaller here. I think I think something like that works. I don't need the, the value of data, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then I'm just gonna hit play and see what happens. And if we go into so just put let's go ahead and put the game view here so we can focus on the items. So the items that we're printing now is 30, 10, and 25. And if you remember, this is gonna be the lowest value that is in the stack. So we're seeing you know, the value of 30, then we're seeing the value of 10, and we're seeing the value of 25, because this was the first one that, this was actually the last one that we put in the stack, but it's sitting on the very top. So remember when I told you that we're basically pushing, let me see if I can. So in this case, I have the value of, you know, the first value, which is right here, it's going to be all the value of 25. So 25 is sitting right here. And if I go ahead and, so we have 25 here, and I can make it I can make it smaller. And let's see if I can go back here. There we go. So we got the value of 25 here, and then we're pushing the value of 10. So if I duplicate that, we have the value of 10 right here. And then if I go back and then duplicate this, and then lastly we have the value of 30, which I have you know right on the very top. Now if we look at our label, and I can resize this so that we can look at side to side, we go back into Unity. And if we look at this, right now we have them in reverse. We have the value of 30, we have the value of 10, and we have the value of 25. So 25 was actually the first value that I put into the stack. So it's basically showing, you know, showing that as the first value, and then as the last value. And then 10 is the, is the second one that I have in the stack. and then. 30 is the last one that I have in the stack because we're pushing things in and that's why you see those values in that order. So let me show you what happens if, you know, now that we need to, now that we need to pop something out of the stack, if I need to pop the value of 30, then what is gonna be the show information in the stack showing? So how do you pop something out of the stack? Let's say that we wanted to push, to pop the value of 30, just like we have right now. That's the one that is sitting on the very top. So let's go back here and I'm gonna do, now we need to pop 
a new player A pop player H out of the stack. Okay, so what I'm going to do to do that, all I need to do is I don't need to do a push, all I need to do is do a pop. And then the other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to say stack item, just so that we can, so that it's cleaner. And then we can show that. And then what I'm going to do now that I popped the top one, I'm going to display it again. And then we can probably just add a little separator here. Every time that I get in here, we're going to be just adding maybe a few dashes so that we know each iteration. All right, and then I'll just do a new line as well. Maybe another new line. Okay, so let's go back into Unity, and he played to stop it, and then he played to play it again. And now you can see that you know this one was sitting on the very top, which is the value of thirty, and then on the and then we have ten, and then that we have twenty-five. So now what we did is we basically popped the last one. And that was the first one to go out. So that that basically, you know, show us the difference between you know using a queue and using a stack, where a stack is going to be, you know, the last one that gets seen is going to be the first one to go out. A queue is going to be the first one that goes in, is going to be the first one that goes out. So that shows you. Let's say if we wanted to pop another item, what would happen? So I'm going to pop another player, H, and then we're going to show the information again. And we're going to go back into Unity. Let's hit play and see what happens. Now we can see that we get, you know, we have the value of 30, 10, and 25. Then we pop 30, 30 gets out. Then we have 10 and 25. And then we pop 10, which is the one on the top. And then we have the value of 25. And lastly, if we want to pop the last one, we can do that as well. And then we can show the information, which is clearly going to be blank because we don't have any more. We don't have any more edges to pop. And if we do this, now you can see that we, after this line, we didn't show anything because there's really nothing any nothing else to pop. So that's basically how you can push items in to the into the stack and also and also items out of the stack. So the other thing that I show you as well is that this is basically inheriting from a enumerable and a collection, and you can do a loop like this. You can also use pop, you can also use push to push items in the stack. And of course you can do you can use other data types as well if you wish. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. Right guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much guys.